It's Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician here, making another video for you on this GM 2.2 liter Ecotec engine. Today, I hope to be able to finish up the timing job. Now, what I mean by the timing job is I hope to be able to get the rest of the timing components installed and all that other good stuff, along with the water pump, double check my work, and then start working towards buttoning this all back up. So, in the previous video, I showed you how to install your lower timing chain that runs your water pump and all that other good stuff. So now I'm going to show you how to install the primary timing chain. First thing you want to do to start that off is install your main crank gear right there. Okay. And so you should have, it should be pointing at 12 o'clock on your keyway. And then your dot here is going to be about the four o'clock position. Let me see if I can get some focus here. So yeah, your dot there is going to be at about the four o'clock position. So now what you're going to want to do next is you're going to want to get all your timing components out, ready to go. And what you see here is how it is going to go in the car. That's, that's what it's basically going to look like when you're done. You're going to start by installing your intake cam gear and you're going to line that up with your colored link on the intake mark okay then you're going to drop that chain and gear down through the top of the engine all right now down inside of here you're going to see that there's what's called a boss uh, for the engine mount you want the chain to go around both sides of that engine boss. And I'll go grab a light and see if I can show you that here in just a second. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to, again, on your intake side, you want to align your chain accordingly with the color link with the mark. Okay, and you want to drop your chain in down from the top. All right, and then down inside of there, I don't know if you can see. Okay, you see that right there? Oh, come on, you goofy camera. All right, yeah, right there. You want to work your chain around both sides of that. Okay, and so there's really no special trick to getting it around there. You just kind of got to wrestle with it a little bit and then just make sure that your chain is around that boss down inside of there. That's for the engine mount, okay? So then you're gonna come down here. And once you get down here, again, double check it. Make sure your chain looks like that, all right? If your chain is all to one side over here, you're not completely around that boss up there. So, so just double check and make sure that's the way it needs to be. Then go ahead and work your chain around your crank snout all right and just leave it like that next we're going to install our tensioner rail which again this is a tensioner rail like this so you should have the extra long one you're going to install the tensioner rail through the top and i'll show you what that looks like here in just a second i'm trying to do the best i can here this this takes both hands so i gotta pause it install and then show you all right, so once you've got that in and you've got that chain down there and you've worked it around your crank, the next thing you want to do is you want to hand install your bolt. Okay, now on the 2.2 liter Ecotec, it doesn't matter if it's VVT or not, you absolutely have to change the camshaft bolts. That's because they are TTY bolts. What that means is torque to yield. In simple terms, when you tighten down these bolts per the factory specification, per the torque specifications, what happens is, is the bolt actually stretches. It's actually designed to stretch and then retain its original shape. And that's what holds that on there when it's turning at 1200 rotations per minute and all that other good stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then once you've hand tightened this bolt, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna install our tensioner, like I said, and I'm gonna show you that here in just a second. 
All right, and so now, and again, just real quick, you're gonna drop your tensioner, not your tensioner, your tensioner timing rail, guide rail, your tensioner guide rail. You're gonna drop that through the top, all right? And you're gonna have to, again, you're gonna have to use both hands to get in there and install it right there, okay? And again, uh, if you watched the previous video, you should already know, but all uh, guide rail, nuts and bolts, and all that other good stuff needs to be torqued down to 89 inch pounds. So drop that tensioner guide rail through the top and tighten that down to 89 inch pounds. Okay, and so once you've got your tensioner guide rail installed, comes the tricky part. You want to go ahead and line up your colored link with your exhaust mark, all right? And you want to, what I call, partially install the exhaust cam. If you try to install it completely, it's not going to line up. We're going to have to do a little bit of a trick where, where we roll this side back just a little bit to get it lined up so what you want to do is you want to install the bolt but leave it so that the cam so that the cam gear can freely move and then i'll, I'll show you the next trick you also want to make sure that your colored link down here is in the right spot okay and you may have to hold it in order for that to happen but you want that color link right there you may have to get a second person I've done this a couple times so I kinda know how to wrestle it but it may help just to get a second person to hold that there while you get it installed now if it comes off that's fine you just need to make sure that that stays there okay so let's get ready for the next step okay so now that you've got this set up all right you gotta make sure that you're good to go on your colored link down here, okay? Now if you notice, there's a bunch of slack in the chain right now, okay? And not only is there a bunch of slack, but at the same time, we, st we also need to get this cam gear on. So what you're gonna do in order to do that is you're gonna turn this camshaft counterclockwise just enough to take the slack out of this side and then also at the same time go ahead and set your exhaust cam gear and tighten it down so again make sure that you're good to go as far as your colored link goes per the mark right which we are we're good to go there actually uh, Yep, there we go. Okay. So again, you can see, make sure that dot is in, is in the middle of the colored link. So you're good to go there. And then what we're going to do, cradle that on there. Okay. And then come up here and turn this counterclockwise just enough to take the slack out and be able to get your intake cam gear on. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it here again and execute that and show it to you. Okay, now that we've executed all this, the final step to this one is to install your tensioner. <clears throat> now, there's a trick to this tensioner. First of all, you absolutely have to make sure that the tensioner is not activated. A non-activated tensioner will have a loose piston, which means you can freely move it back and forth. Okay, if for some reason the tensionator, the, the tensionator, the tensionator, if for some reason the tensioner was activated, maybe during shipping, what will happen is this will be all the way extended and it will have the resistance of the spring on it. What you have to do then is you have to remove that clip ring in there. You have to take it apart and you have to deactivate the tensioner. So again, before you install your tensioner, make sure... That, it is, that the piston is loose and it is not activated. Also, go ahead and check all of your timing marks. Make sure your colored links are lined up where they're supposed to be at. 
you're going to want the intake side to be at the two o'clock position. You're gonna want the exhaust side to be at about the 10 o'clock position. Well, actually, no, that's not 10 o'clock, that's about 11 o'clock. So yeah, you're gonna want about 11 o'clock and you're gonna want at two o'clock. Make sure your links are lined up and then you're gonna wanna go down here, <clears throat> verify that you're lined up on all of your links and that your links match the dots and you've got the slack on the tension side. And once you've verified all that, you can now go ahead and install your tensioner. Okay, and then once all that is done, you verified everything's lined up, ready to go. You wanna install your tensioner and you wanna tighten that down to 55 foot pounds, okay? Next, you're gonna wanna take a pry bar and if you already have a rubber tip for your pry bar, great. If you don't have one, wrap it up in some type of tape, scotch tape, black tape, so you can create a soft tip. What you're gonna do is you're gonna stick the pry bar down there on your chain, and you're gonna push in about two or three millimeters, and that's gonna activate your tensioner for you. <clears throat> Once you've activated your tensioner, then you wanna go ahead and torque these camshaft bolts down to 69 foot-pounds. Once you've done all that, you can go ahead and start putting this car back together, but you need to take the extra time that it takes to verify and double, possibly even triple check all the work that you have done. You wanna make sure that everything is torqued down correctly. Don't forget your upper guide rail, uh, 69 foot-pounds on the camshaft bolts, <clears throat> 89 inch pounds on any of the timing components and all that other good stuff. So there you go, folks. That's how you install the timing and water pump on a 2.2 uh, Ecotech engine. If you have any questions, shoot them to me in the comments. I really appreciate all you guys coming out and watching and hanging out with me. I appreciate all the support that I get from you guys. Um, again, uh, any questions you have, shoot them to me in the comments. My email is highgrooveauto, the number 30. So H-I-G-H-G-R-O-O-V-E, auto, 30, at gmail.com. I really enjoy helping you guys out uh, with your projects. I also enjoy hearing from you and getting different ideas and ways of doing stuff. So hit me up. Other than that, guys, this is Matthew, your friendly neighborhood technician, signing off.